If you want to learn how to record high quality, long distance podcast interviews, you are in the right place. In this video, we'll share the top five things that you can do to get the best audio quality possible, no matter which recording software you end up going with. And then Albin and I will walk through our top recommendations for podcasters that need to either record long distance interviews or record with multiple hosts from different locations. So tip number one is we want to just get a quiet environment. Try to record in a space of the house where there's not a lot of other people, if possible, and pick a time of the day when maybe your neighbor isn't outside uh, mowing their lawn. And then you also want to pick a room where you have a lot of stuff in it. The worst thing for a podcast recording is a room that's empty or has a lot of hard, flat surfaces in it. Because what those do is they uh, provide wonderful reflection surfaces for those sound waves to bounce back re-enter your microphone and you get this nasty echo reverb sound in your podcast recording. If you watch some of the other videos on our channel, Jalan actually films a lot of her tutorials in a walk-in closet because for her, that is the best place to get a great recording. Tip number two is wear headphones. So when we're doing a remote recording, I need to be able to listen to Travis at the same time that I'm talking. If I'm not using headphones, I'm getting a lot of Travis's noise out of the computer and that noise will get picked up by the mic. So that actually will introduce this weird echoey lag sound, which is just going to be really difficult to edit out. Use headphones not only to eliminate that problem, but also so you can monitor your own recording. That if you don't have headphones on and you're speaking into a microphone, it's hard to see or tell when you're starting to drift away from the microphone when you're starting to speak softer or more loudly. And so just by having an active uh, feedback of how you sound as well is a really good bonus. So tip number three, we wanna minimize the lag in our conversation. Depending on how far away the person is from you and your internet connections, lag can introduce some really weird dynamics. You might start talking over your guest, or maybe there's these kind of awkward pauses in the middle. A lot of, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You go ahead. Um, that's mostly introduced by, from lag. Close out all of your browsers that you're not using. Uh, go ahead and turn off any streaming devices at home. Anything you can do to speed up uh, your internet connection is really going to pay dividends. Tip number four is just reducing any sounds that you're introducing. We've already gone to an area of the house where other people aren't going to make a lot of sounds, but a lot of podcasters make noise that they're going to end up editing out later. So some examples are just kind of playing with the microphone. Uh, that's going to give you some weird noises. Or one I find myself doing a lot is kind of moving around in my chair. And if you get a squeak, now you're going to have to edit that out. For some people, earrings or jewelry and like a necklace, especially if they're kind of jangling around, they can create a lot of noise, especially when you're talking. So it becomes really difficult to work on. Travis, are there any others that you can think of? The biggest thing that I would encourage you to consider, if you can, if you have the ability to, is invest in something like a boom arm, which both Albin and I are using, or a table stand that has a shock mount with it. Because often what will happen is if you have your microphone sitting on top of the table, and you're typing on your keyboard or you're taking notes or you bump against it accidentally, those get picked up pretty prominently in your audio recordings and you cannot get them out once they are there. So if you can, get your microphone off the table, get a shock mount, whether you have to get an external one like I have, or if your microphone has an internal shock mount, which the SM7B that Albin is using has one of those, that will really help as well for eliminating some of those extraneous things that can creep into your recordings. So tip number five, and this might be one of the most important tips, is microphone technique. Um, just having a consistent approach to your microphone is really going to help you with editing levels later on. You want to be about three to four inches or finger lengths away from the microphone. So right there, I'm about three uh, finger lengths away, and that's about where I want to be. The main thing is you want to stay at a consistent spot because you don't want to drift away and get really close. Uh, because then you're going to have to try to deal with those levels later on. Travis, any other microphone technique tips? Well, and the reason that that distance is so critical, especially if you're using a dynamic microphone, 
like either the ones that Alvin and I are using or even like a Samsung Q2U or an Audio-Technica ATR2100, rest in peace, uh, they are designed to pick up the, the sound directly in front of the microphone capsule. And so if you're in the back of the room, it's going to pick you up and it's also going to pick up a lot of background noise. But they are fantastic at isolating the sound right here in front of the capsule and rejecting everything else. That's what makes dynamic microphones so great for podcasting because we're not always in these professionally treated sound booths. But if you have a uh, condenser microphone like a Blue Yeti, that's going to pick up a lot of that background noise even when you are right up next to that microphone. So practicing good microphone technique with a dynamic microphone does a world of good for your audio recordings. One of the best features for Zoom is just the overall simplicity. Now, it doesn't have the most beautiful UI, but it's just a lot of people that have used it. So you can send a link to almost anybody and they can just start recording. They don't need to set up an account to actually record with you. If you're interviewing someone who doesn't have access to a computer, they can just do a call in to Zoom. The audio quality is not as good, but you have that functionality. Now, one feature that you probably will not take full advantage of with Zoom is the ability to have 100 people in the meeting at the same time. If that is you, then your first order of business is kicking 96 people off of your podcast <laughs> so, so that you can actually hear what's going on. Uh, but that is also nice with Zoom is that you're not really going to run into a limit of the number of people that you can have on your show. Next thing we're going to talk about is video quality. So the video you're watching right now is the video from Zoom. Um, from when Travis and I are recording this. And the nice thing is Zoom will give you the ability to download this, but it's going to be compressed. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some kind of artifacts popping up on the screen and you don't get a super crisp image. Yeah, if you are just looking for something to throw on social media to help promote the episode, or if you want to figure out an easy way to start publishing your podcast to YouTube, then posting the Zoom video is a great first step. All right, so let's talk about a few of the cons with Zoom. One con is we're not even able to tell you exactly which plan you need to sign up for now. Um, at one point, all of this stuff was free. And then for a while, some of these important features were only available on the $15 plan. So it's quite possible when you're watching this, you need to pay $15 a month to get all of this functionality. If you want to record more than two people, so if you have two co-hosts, then you're going to need to definitely be on that $15 plan because so that there aren't time limits on your episodes. Second is you're not ever going to get lossless audio. You're going to get something called lossy, which means you lose some of the sound quality and it's just not going to be as good a quality as you'd get with something like Squadcast. It's not bad and you can hear for yourself what that sounds like right now, but it's just not as high quality as is possible. Zoom is hands down the budget-friendly option that I recommend the most. Whenever a new podcaster approaches me and says, hey, I need to record something long distance and I don't have a lot of money to spend, what should I do? I tell them you use Zoom. Sure, for a couple extra bucks every month, you can get some you know, better options as far as audio quality is concerned, but for ease of use and the ability to get up and get started, Zoom is a great option. Squadcast is really focusing on one thing and that's giving you the highest quality audio possible. So the way they're doing this is everybody's audio is recorded locally to their computer as just their own voice. And it's recording it as lossless files, which are like the biggest files and also the highest quality. Yeah. So it, down in the bottom right corner, you can see this bar is moving left to right. You can see my audio on the top. You can see Albin's audio on the bottom. And so as we're talking, it's actually consistently uploading that audio file to Squadcast. At the end, it's going to finish rendering those audio files, and then I get to download them and use them in Hindenburg or GarageBand Audacity, whatever software that you're using. So it really is a great system, and the audio quality is top-notch. One of the reasons it stands out from some of the other software that does the same thing, so I can get almost the same thing with like CleanFeed, um, the difference is that we can actually see each other. And I really like the ability to see the co you know, the person I'm recording with just so that you can 
you know, if they start nodding to something, you know, you're saying something that they like, or maybe you can see they're getting a little distracted. So it's just nice to have that additional connection. The great thing about Squadcast, in addition to recording each person's audio separately and recording that high quality audio, is that they actually record a backup of your audio file. This is something that's very unique to Squadcast. If you've ever been in an audio recording situation long distance where you like end the interview and then something happens, like some freak accident and you lose the interview, Squadcast has a built-in backup plan to help save your interview. So now let's dive into a few of the limitations or the reasons you may pick something besides Squadcast. First limitation, I don't think is too big of a limitation, but some people, this is something important to them. You can only record four people on a podcast uh, with Squadcast. Travis, why is that not a big deal? Well, once you start getting beyond four people recording simultaneously, it can be difficult to understand what's going on, especially if you have people talking over each other. And so if you're at the point where you're beyond four people, consider paring down the number of people recording at any one given point in time. But if you really do need more than four people, you can use a solution like Zoom, which allows you to record up to 100 people. So, you know, record as many people as you want. Just know that's probably going to negatively impact your podcast. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if you want full chaos, Zoom has the 100-person plan where all of you can record at the exact same time. Actual cons for Squadcast, right now there's no ability to record the video. I know it's something that they've been working on for a while, um, but it's still not available at the time of this recording. We are recording something because you see something on the screen right now. That is Travis setting up some other software to record his screen, just help you see what it looks like to record something inside a Squadcast. Prices on Squadcast range from 10 to $45 a month. They will give you a bit of a discount if you prepay for a year, but with all of this software, I recommend take it one month at a time in the beginning and then upgrade once you know that you are gonna use this for the long haul. Most people, though, I don't think are going to end up on that $10 plan. You're going to need a bit more time. So the $10 only gets you two hours of recording. So you're probably going to want to upgrade to the $20 plan so you get a full five hours. It's a little bit more expensive, like you said, than a free option like Zoom. But the right price for the people it's targeting, which is anyone trying to get the last bit of audio quality possible. I hope that video was really informative and gave you the insight that you need to make a good decision for your podcast. Now, before you go, if you are an independent podcaster that wants to continue to hone your skills and become better at your craft, whether it's growing your audience, becoming a better editor, or learning how to monetize your podcast, make sure you subscribe to the Buzzsprout YouTube channel because every single week we put out multiple videos covering everything from microphone reviews to step-by-step software tutorials and podcast strategy video. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you can get notifications whenever we post new videos, and we'll do our part to give you up-to-the-date tactics and strategies that are working for independent podcasters like you. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep podcasting.